Hi, I'm Miles Messenger. I'm Head of Energy Engineering for Bouygues Energies and Services, and we're here at the Swaffham Prior Heat Network project. We're going to start this process eight kilometres away from here, where Bouygues Energies and Services are currently completing a large solar farm. Now that solar farm ultimately is going to be connected to a series of private cables that links the energy centre to the solar farm itself. What that will do is it will mean that we're actually supplying the energy centre with renewable energy itself. So that's the start of this renewable process. That will deliver about 95% of the site's electricity needs throughout the course of the year. So the private electricity network terminates here and it powers two types of heat pump. One of the key innovations that we've brought here is the hybrid solution between the different types of renewable energy technology. Now, it might seem obvious, but air source heat pumps run a lot more efficiently when the air temperature is high. Ground source heat pumps, comparatively, run relatively this, uh, constant efficiency throughout the course of the year. So what we did is we modeled different arrangements between ground and air source. So we end up with a solution where in the summer, the air source heat pump is taking priority and the ground source heat pump has a, a chance to relax. Whereas in the winter, the ground source heat pump is running at peak duty with the air source occasionally topping it up. It means that we're getting the best of both worlds and maximizing on the efficiency of the energy center plant. One of the key limitations of conventional heat pump technology is it tends only to be able to achieve quite low heating temperatures in the region of say 50 to 60 degrees. What we've done here is we've brought industrial heat pump technology that's able to get into a much higher temperature range. We're actually operating at around 75 degrees flow temperature, and that's much more akin to a conventional heating system. Now in the village of Swaffham Prior, we're serving a range of buildings from 16th century listed buildings to present day modern buildings. So we needed a solution that could be retrofitted uh, into those properties without having to change and adapt the building fabric itself, the radiators and the hot water circuits. So by operating at this higher temperature, it means that we don't have to do all of those retrofit measures as well. So you'll also see that there is a large fan bed. Now that's an air source heat pump fan bed. Obviously it's much larger than what you'd find in a domestic dwelling. And that's because it provides up to 500 kilowatts of heat to the network. Behind us, you'll see that there are four large tanks these are thermal stores and they will be filled with 200 tonnes of thermal fluid. They will act a bit like a battery in some respects. They will charge and discharge effectively to smoothen the peaks and troughs in demand uh, from the village itself. So these are the main flow and return heat network pipes. So these pipes then go into the ground and they go throughout the village, mainly underneath the roadways, uh, to distribute the heat to each property. It works on a similar principle to a normal heating system, insofar as it's a closed system that just circulates the fluid from flow and return all the way through, and that's how we're providing the heat to the consumer. In total, it's just over seven kilometers of pipework in terms of flow and return, so three and a half kilometers in its extent of the network. So really, it's starting its journey here, traveling seven, and a half, seven kilometers, and then ending up back here where it's replenished with heat. These pipes are pre-insulated and that means that they're not losing heat as they transfer the heat throughout the village to each customer property. So as I mentioned, we have a blend of air source and ground source heat pumps within the energy centre and that combination is how we are gaining the maximum efficiency from the energy centre itself. Behind us we've got this field which is what serves the ground source heat pump. And in this field we have 100 to 200 metre deep boreholes now, within those boreholes, we have a loop of pipe. That pipe goes all the way down to the bottom of the borehole and back up again. And we're circulating fluid through that pipe and it's exchanging with heat from the surrounding ground. Effectively, the pipes inside that borehole are lower than the ground's temperature surrounding it. So the heat is then absorbed into that pipe. Now, each of those 200 meter deep boreholes are connected through a series of underground pipes. They eventually go back to what we call a manifold. And that manifold is similar to uh, an underfloor heating manifold that you might have in a house, effectively managing the uh, distribution of fluid across 
the field and through each borehole so that we make sure that they're balanced equally. In turn, those manifolds are connected to large header pipes that then connect back into the energy centre and into the ground source heat pump. The boreholes that you see behind me, basically we use five drilling rigs. They're down to 200 metres in depth and they're 200 millimetres in diameter. A casing is installed down to 12 to 15 metres. That's to support the softer uh, upper layers. And once that casing has been installed by the drilling rig, we then drill through the centre of the casing down to the total depth. Once we've completed that process, the loop is then supported by weights at the bottom of the hole. And then we grout the hole with a specialist mix all the way to the surface. So the borehole is effectively a encased, insulated core and that is uh, to help the heat transfer from the ground into the, into the loop. With 108 boreholes that we've installed to date, and the ground source loops that we've installed in those 108 boreholes, that equates to over 45 kilometres of hose. And the work that you can now see that is progressing is to now join those boreholes up into a single borehole array, and they will then circulate to the ground source heat pumps within the energy centre as required. So right now, as you can see, the field is showing signs of scars. We have been working in this field and building this uh, borehole array for the last 12 or so months. Now, in the next few months and years to come, it will regenerate. We will undertake remedial work to the field and it will eventually become a meadow. So the good news is, is this will remain as a meadow for the years to come and will continue to support the wildlife and biodiversity in the area.